Welcome to Aberhall Junction, and today, installing a PL1001 twist lock turnout motor. There's not many other reviews for these on YouTube and on forums and things, so um, let's give it a try. Um, the beauty of this is it should be soldering free. Um, I shouldn't need my soldering iron. These are the things I'll be using. Um, there's my power supply. Um, I'm going for uh, CDU to give it a nice little kick. Um, yeah, the turn motor itself. Uh, there's a micro switch there as well for frog polarity. Um, bit of wiring and I'm going to use old fashioned switches. Um, I'm not going to try and do it uh, with my select or with um, accessory decoders or anything. I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way with some nice switches because I just think that's pretty cool. I may not think it's cool once I've got 20 of them, but let's see. So yeah, um, hopefully you'll enjoy. Um, if you do, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, yeah, these are, as I said, not very highly reviewed anywhere. So if you've got experience with them um, and any hints and tips to let me avoid any mishaps, please let me know. Okay, so the point that we'll be installing today is this one by here. That's the crossover at the end of my uh, station line, which comes through here. Um, there's a link up there to my layout um, and how it's gonna be run, etc., etc. Um, yeah, please check that out and uh, come back if you wanna see how this twist lock motor goes in. As I said, without soldering, it should be apparently a piece of cake. So here goes. Okay, so this is video one of four. Um, they're gonna be quick four minute video type things. So after about 60 minutes odd, you'll know whether these points make sense for you, how to install them. Um, the next video will be how to wire them up. Um, then I'll cover the micro switch quickly. And then finally, the pivotal question, should you buy them or not? Um, okay, so this first video is the physical installation. And all you need for this process is a flathead screwdriver, which is one of my bugbears, but hey ho. Um, a one and a half mil drill bit, which is stupidly small and I hope I don't break it. Um, the Obviously the motor itself, uh, the fittings that come with it. And this thing over here, which is the, um, the diagram for doing the drills, the layout diagram. That's the main advantage of this um, point motor is that it's easy to get in the right place underneath your baseboard. It's easy to install um, and should work first time. So this is my first time installing it and we'll see how I get on. Okay, so this is the the point that I'm gonna get the motor installed onto. Um, just for those that have been following the the layout progress, it's this point here on the inner loop. Um, yeah, the tight inner loop, <laughs> which is giving me no end of headaches. Um, yeah, there's two options um, for the point motor installation. Um, number one, you can do it on top of the on top of the baseboard. Um, I'm not entirely sure why you would do that with this um, motor. It probably makes more sense to use another one. Um, where it shines is for the below baseboard, so it gives you a drilling template. Um, fairly straightforward. You've got the centre hole there, which goes right through where the pin will come through on your tie bar that hole right there um, and you're essentially you are drilling pilot holes which go all the way through the board for these little screws then for where they will be located with these lugs which the point motor twists onto the center one which you then elongate um, is where the the bar actual bar which does all the work which will come through the main hole in the middle so yeah it's fairly straightforward 
for double O, which is me, the, these red lines here, they match up with the rails. Um, obviously lay out where you know your point mark was going to go beforehand. I've got a piece of wood that's actually under the baseboard, which is on this line. So I need to make sure I'm far enough away from that, that the uh, motor can fit in. But other than that, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you match your uh, tie bar hole to the one on the plan. You make sure your rails follow the red lines. And then it's just a case of taping this down. That's one thing I should have mentioned on the equipment required, just bog standard cell tape. Tape it down, drill three holes, one and a half mil holes through the baseboard, and then get underneath. So I'll go and do that now. Yeah, make sure you've got plenty of light for this because seeing those red lines underneath the, the point when it's in place is a bit of a challenge. So I've got the, the tie bar hole directly over the large six millimeter hole that's in the middle of this layout. And I've got my rails following the, the red lines. So that looks good. I'll get that taped down now and get the holes drilled. Okay, so this is the layout sheet. And this here is where you want the tie bar, the bar from underneath to come up. So you just get your rails aligned on the red lines. And then with the hole that's in the middle of your tie bar, you align that with the left hand side of the hole. And then obviously when it flicks over to the other side, it will be on the right hand side of the hole. I, at the whole point, it'll always be within the diameter of that hole. The alternative is to get your tie bar to be in the middle and then line it up with the center of the hole. I find it easier to do it this way. Uh, there's no right way of doing that. Um, yeah, so that's it lined up. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. I'll go ahead and tape it down. Um, the one thing to note, and I've seen on one other video that has actually looked at this before, is if you've got a lot of cork here and this layout sheet within the area that you have to drill i essentially that width if it if your stuff is too narrow or there's undulations or whatever when you pin this down it can cause the the paper to move somewhat and misalign the holes so just make sure when you pin it down when you tape it down that those holes stay exactly where they should because obviously that aligns up the whole point. If you get that wrong, you may as well use another point motor. Okay, so I sit tape down there. And um, I didn't spare the tape because I really don't want to sink the shift. And now all I need to do is go ahead and drill these two one and a half mil holes. I'm just going to drill the six mil one just straight off with a six mil bit because I'm nervous about breaking my one and a half mil bit drill bits. Just quickly before we go under, um, that's the beauty of the uh, of this system really is that the majority of the work is done topside as opposed to banging your head underneath the uh, the baseboard. So for this process, I'll need two screws. This is the bar you need if you're doing a surface mounted option. And then there's these two spaces, which you also need if you're doing the surface mounted option, which obviously I don't need. I don't need. Um, what you do, you get the these two bits that they've got here. Engage within that twist, twist lock, hence the name. Okay, so let's get the other one built and let's get under the baseboard. 
Try not to drop these uh, red lugs, by the way, they are very fiddly and they'll be a nightmare to find. <laughs> okay, so we're now under the baseboards. It's a real pain in the what's it's trying to set up this shop, but hey, <laughs> um, yeah, what you end up with is two nice little one and a half mil holes and the big six mil one, which tore a bit more of a hole as it came through. I'll have to tidy that up before we put the uh, the point motor on but yeah and then all you do is you grab your screw with the two red lugs installed onto it and try and screw these in without wrecking the shot <laughs> which is a bit of a pain but anyway we'll persevere okay here we go I'm oh, doing it left-handed. <laughs> oh, come on. I hate flat-head screws, i got to be honest. And i got a glaring floodlight here, blinding me in the process. Hmm. Maybe you need to be at a different angle to see this. Okay, so we'll try it from this angle. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And if not, you'll see the end product. It's not going to take long to get these in. Even with a flathead screwdriver. Okay. One on. Now the next one. Yeah, if I could make one recommendation to them, it would be to put these on Phillips. <laughs> so much better. So much less fiddly. Uh, I'll do this off shot, makes it easier. Okay, so I've got you out of my way. Apologies if I got into any of those shots. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Now I'm directly underneath this to get it in tidy. Okay, so. As I said, not a big fan of flathead screws. But... We're almost there. I right, give that one a little one for luck. I mean, they're tiny screws, so it doesn't take any effort to get them in. All right, that's in. That's in. And now all it is is to grab the point motor. Okay, so that's the two screws in place. And now all that's left to do is thread the bar up through the middle and then hopefully you can still see this without my arm getting in the way lock the yeah twist it clockwise and lock it in place that's it seems a bit loose to me i'll give those screws another quick little tie but yeah it seems to go on all right Let's do this up a bit. Yeah, probably a bit loose. And this one a bit for luck. Yeah, don't scrimp on these uh, screws. Give them a bit of a wally. Okay, so I'll try that again. Bar up through the middle of the hole. That's very straightforward. And then turn the thing clockwise. Oh yeah, that's much better. And it locks into place and there's the the wires ready for me to wire it up which is the next video um so yeah all in all um even having to set up this um light show under here and get all the cameras done and do all the filming and if you haven't done a youtube video it's it is a bit of a pain setting everything up and making everything work so even with all of that 
it's still only taken 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes to get this in. So they are very quick and easy. Um, and that's their main selling point. They cost more. Uh, I'll come to that in video four, but their main selling point is that they're really straightforward to align. And that was easy. Um, I haven't got the best carpentry skills as you've seen in the videos and my previous videos and what you can see under here. But that was really straightforward. Hmm. All right, next video, let's see if the thing works. You can see how this thing works in action and any flaws that I need to mention. If you've got any comments on this, please leave them in the comments below. As I said, there's not an awful lot of reviews on this and it's been out for about a year from Pico. So I was wondering why. Um, so I've taken the dive and we'll see if it's a, it's a winner or not. So this is what you end up with above. Um, here's the bar coming through there. And then you just have a couple of little holes, which will be more than disappeared by the ballast. Um, I'll try and do this one-handed. Bar coming up, slips through the hole. There we go. Ah, there we go. Yeah, you can just see that there sticking out. Um, it says on the instructions that it's only good for a 15 mil baseboard. My baseboard, bought during the times of COVID, is 18 mil exterior ply. Um, and once this is pinned down, that actually is perfect. It sticks up probably a couple of mil, so I won't actually even have to cut it. So yeah, even though it says 15 mil, hopefully you can just see that little white bar coming up there in the middle. It says 15 mil, but you can see there, once this is pinned down, I've got a good few mil on that. It's actually perfect. So. Yeah, you wouldn't want any more than 18 mil. It certainly wouldn't go through. I did toy with the idea that I may have to shave a bit of my baseboard away at the bottom just to make sure it sticks out. But yeah, good couple of mil clearance there. I'm happy with that. Once it's attacked down properly, that won't be a problem. Okay, on to wiring. Cheers for coming, folks. Just one very quick thing to note um, just before I pack up for the night. I just noticed... Um, when I first started flicking the, the point mode back and forth, or the point back and forth, it wasn't quite going all the way over. Um, so I thought there was something wrong with the installation. But as it turns out, if you're using Woodland Scenics foam, like I am, um, as your underlay, just make sure you've got enough space cut out um, for that. The 6mm drill bit does seem to be big enough. Um, but yeah, just elongate the, f the bit around the foam, maybe to about 7mm just to ensure it's got enough clearance but yeah no, that all looks perfect um i'll see you in the next video for a bit of wiring let's get this baby working